This recording exists to give you a few ideas about asthma and natural health care. It's primarily just research and information. We're, we're not encouraging you to self-treat and we're not, not giving you treatment plans. These are ideas for you to discuss with your doctor. But the fact of the matter is lifestyle change, uh, nutrition and other things can improve your symptoms. And the fact the fact of the matter, the asthma is on the rise. It increased by 75% between 1980 and 1994 and continues to increase. Um, in 2002, there were 1.9 million asthma-related visits to the emergency room, and the disease keeps on increasing. And there is a strong link between allergies and asthma. Approximately 20 million Americans have asthma, 9 million of them are under the age of 18. More than 70% of the people with asthma also suffer from allergies. It turns out that uh, asthma is one of those diseases that is treated very well by medicine, which can save your life, and natural medicine, nat natural methods can help you to better maintain the disease, um, and neither precludes the use of the other. There's a lot of research uh, showing that natural approaches helping asthmatics. Uh, one of the, re the topics that shows up a lot is antioxidants. Uh, there, we got a piece from the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition uh, showing vitamin C status as, as a risk factor for asthma, low vitamin C status. Uh, low concentration of antioxidant nutrients in the plasma also uh, published in the European uh, Respiratory Journal. Uh, also shows low antioxidants as a risk factor for asthma. A number of research studies have shown that omega-3 fatty acids compared to omega-6 and other fats or even trans fats uh, very anti-inflammatory. Asthma is an inflammatory condition uh, and, and a number of studies uh, this one from uh, the Australian New Zealand Journal of Medicine from 1994, but there are so many studies that show the connection between intake of omega-3 fatty acids and reduction of asthma symptoms. A lot of research shows that magnesium is beneficial, even to the point where uh, people having life-threatening asthma attacks in the emergency room being brought out of it by intravenous magnesium. And there's a strong relationship between low magnesium and the development of asthma. In fact, it could be said that magnesium is one of your most important nutrients. Here's a piece of research from the Journal of Asthma that shows that uh, supplementing asthmatics with uh, magnesium uh, produced a significant improvement in lung function and the ability to move air in and out of the lungs. Uh, the group taking the magnesium reported higher, better quality of life compared to the placebo group. And this is only one example. There are several examples of magnesium benefiting asthmatics. There are a number of studies that also show dietary changes uh, can improve asthmatic symptoms, and poor diet makes them worse. Uh, the main issue in diet is, is a diet that's high in antioxidants and what we call a, 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 an anti-inflammatory diet which means that an anti-inflammatory diet is basically eating fresh whole foods uh, dominated by fresh produce. About two-thirds to three-quarters of what you eat should be fresh uh, produce. Um, in our office, we tell them to avoid grains, mainly because grains are heavily sprayed. Um, they're also commonly allergens. Um, also, for people with digestive issues, avoiding grains is good. We use something called the paleo diet. Uh, but a paleo diet with 75% of the food by volume uh, as pro fresh produce is very beneficial. Uh, so, some uh, patients notice results in a matter of days. It's also worth mentioning inhaler use uh, is linked to severity of symptoms and even, even death in asthmatics. So the thing that you have to understand about inhalers is they will clear the airways, but they also set up a little bit of irritation in the air, airways. So someone who has used a lot of the inhaler a lot and is having severe symptoms, uh, taking nutrients to protect the lining of uh, the bronchioles is very, very, very important, and we'll get into that later. So we're going to give you an overview of 
what can help most asthmatics. Now, you can get into specific health issues, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But mainly, a paleo diet, which is no grains, no potatoes, uh, no complex carbohydrates. It's mainly fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, and lean meats. Uh, and we're recommending 75% vegetables because that makes the diet very anti-inflammatory. Supplementing with magnesium. There's so many studies that show the benefit of magnesium. Uh, magnesium is something you want to take to bowel tolerance. What we mean by that is if you take enough magnesium, you'll get loose stools and even diarrhea. So you want to grip, take maybe 100 milligrams and then go to 200. Gradually increase. If your stools get soft or you get diarrhea, back off and figure your dosage for that. Take as much magnesium as you can without having loose stools. The, the fourth thing that we recommend is um, fish oil. Uh, but you have to be sure of the quality. Uh, a, a lot of commercial fish oils, a lot of fish oil that's cheap, you buy at Walgreens or whatever, you may find uh, have um, dioxins and mercury. There's a lot, a lot of pollutants in the ocean. Uh, Nordic Naturals is uh, a, a company that distills their fish oil. Some people argue that that's not, a, not as good as having a good pure fish oil. Uh, we use Biotics Research, which... Uh, takes uh, fish oil from small fish harvested in the southern hemisphere and they tend to have and they test for dioxin and mercury also but you want to make sure you get a good quality fish oil and fish oil is very anti-inflammatory the the fifth thing is and this comes under the um, antioxidant we mentioned antioxidants earlier but also flavonoids flavonoids are also antioxidants um, but one of the good things that they do is they also protect the lining, uh, especially if inhalers have been used a lot. Zinc and vitamin A are two other nutrients that are good for um, mucous membranes. Uh, you have to be careful with vitamin A. If you take too much, it's toxic. So at th that point, it's a good idea to get professional help advising you. But most of the things on this page are are pretty innocuous. They, they, they won't interfere with any medical treatment. Um, if you run it by your medical doctor, usually they're pretty happy with it. Uh, it. Medicine has even gotten into the lifestyle change to help asthmatics lately. And there are a lot of alternative medical things. There's, there are studies that show that chiropractic is beneficial. Uh, most chiropractors have been in practice for a long time will tell you that, that the work they do on asthmatics, asthmatics uh, help quite a bit. If the usual things don't work, the things to look for are hidden food sensitivities, especially gluten and dairy. One of the reasons we recommend the uh, paleo diet is there's no dairy, there's no, there, there's no corn, there's no wheat. These are very common uh, food allergens. Uh, another thing is stress and adrenal function. Uh, an individual who has asthma and allergies uh, and has been under a lot of stress or has even been eating poorly, to, to exacerbate that stress, there's uh, a, a lot of alternative practitioners will do adrenal support. Uh, many swear by this. Don't have a lot of research on it. The, the first half of this was about what's research. This is about more alternative care and things that people in alternative medicine will do. Uh, the third thing is digestion, low stomach acid. Oddly enough, uh, medicine does not recommend or or even believe that uh, hydrochloric acid is necessary or that the stomach may not produce enough hydrochloric acid. It's kind of a mainstay uh, in natural health care and commonly they will, um, they, uh, na natural health practitioners will give digestive aids, even hydrochloric acid to improve digestion and improve symptoms. Once again, you want to talk to somebody that's trained in this. You don't want to just start taking digestive aids. Um, the emotional connection we won't get too into. But one thing that's worth mentioning along these lines is sometimes uh, when you're emotional, you tend to breathe shallow from the top of your lungs. Uh, a lot of practitioners will place their hands on the lower rib cage and have the patient breathe and have them practice breathing to where they see that the hands move apart, forcing diaphragmatic breathing um, and doing exercises along those lines are very useful, especially if there's a strong emotional connection. Uh, the fifth thing, uh, dysbiosis, uh, there's about seven pounds of bacteria in your, in your colon. It belongs there. Uh, people have take, eaten a lot of refined foods, who have taken um, a lot of antibiotics. A lot of times the, the bugs that grow there are, are not 
appropriate and these people will accumulate allergies there's a lot of toxins in their bloodstream and, and and a lot of times when you do things that make sense and you don't get the result a lot of times you're really dealing with serious digestive issues and and the types of things that are growing in the intestine and this has been a pre presentation of whole health web uh, if you've got health questions we've got answers there's there's hundreds, probably thousands of uh, articles on natural health care. Uh, you can see the original research on asthma if you, if you so choose. Uh, I'm Dr. Paul Varnas. Thank you for listening.